do not make this mistake in Thailand. Key said it to me, Tempest said it to me. Do you think I listened? Nah. I know I make my videos like heaps of fun and stuff, but it's not always easy being away from your family, eh? I've been here three weeks and I've made three massive mistakes. I've fixed them, but no one else should do what I did. I'm gonna tell you about them today. Key said to me before I arrived, reputation here, Sam, is everything. Not so important if you're just visiting on holiday for two weeks. But if you're living here, reputation matters. It's hot as Hades today down in John Tien Beach. So let's go get a drink and I will sit down and I'll tell you about these three mistakes I made and please learn from my mistakes if you want to live here. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was really funny. The police just drove past and the cart mid through chopping the watermelon just like fired up and left because obviously they're not allowed to be parked there. But don't worry, they're coming back. Top on cart. Okay, I thought I was ordering a watermelon slushy, but apparently I ordered a watermelon, but that's fine. I ate my watermelon, I had a soda, I'm more composed. We're gonna talk about this, but I borrowed a friend's little electric e-bike today. So I'm gonna hit the frog and toad, and I'm gonna explain to you why I was a fucking dickhead. I also forgot to say, I'm currently three days sober. That's something we also need to talk about. Okay, this thing is really struggling to get up just like the slightest hill. Hey, like it's slowing down. I can tell the battery is dying. The battery goes down to one bar when I give it throttle. So I'm going to take it back to my friend and borrow her scooter instead. Okay, so I've changed up the little baby for a real scoopy scooter and a helmet. Come around to LK Metro because my watch is broken and there's a watch man here. So this lovely man for a very good price has fixed it up for me. Cop and carp, thank you. Yeah. Would you believe I've been such a piece of shit in the last three and a half weeks, so much drinking, that I've not been for a swim in the ocean yet. I've not been for a one single swim. Three days sober, three days not drinking. I didn't bring a towel, but who cares? When you arrive on a low budget, there is very little margin for error. There is no buffer zone, no safety net. If I ride a scooter and I crash it, I'm done. If I upset the wrong local, I'm done. If I prioritize partying and socializing over health and budgeting, I'm done. If I spend more than I earn, I'm done. And if I deviate from my strict budget any longer, I'm done. Furthermore, if I can't get on top of my stress and I choose confrontation over calmness, I'm done. So what are my three mistakes? In the three weeks I've been here, I've had three confrontations. Each of them, my fault. The first one, I was drunk, was, was with a Western tourist. It was physical, I was at fault. The next confrontation I had, I butted heads with Keys and my family back in home over the phone. Again, my fault. And thirdly, most damaging of all, I had a confrontation with a Thai local and a female at that. Again, my fault. So why am I revealing all this? It's because being confrontational is completely out of character for me. And I think apart from being intoxicated and drinking too much, it says something about the stresses, the stressors of moving abroad. And it has been completely, completely much, much harder moving to Thailand than I could ever have imagined that it was gonna be. And why was the third thing the worst? because it's about reputation. When you're here and you have very little money, all I have is my reputation. And everybody here talks, right? If you do something bad, word will spread. And then you are potentially pariah. Now that's okay if I'd only planned to be here two weeks on a holiday and never come back. You can get away with whatever, it doesn't matter. But I plan to make this my home and I can't get away with being a douchebag like that really ever again. One chance. How did I fix those three fuck ups? The Westerner, I went up, I apologized, and I bought him a drink, shook his hand, and explained why I reacted the way I did. I made up with keys and my close ones, 
but I told them that I'm just gonna have to get really, really real and transparent about the amount I'm drinking, the amount I'm spending, and take a step back. Because if I'm not super, super careful, I will blow through what little savings I have left like that. The party has to stop. And lastly, with the girls I upset, I went back to their bar in the light of day. I apologized profusely. I bought them some drinks. I gave them a tip. I did them some artwork. And luckily, luckily, thankfully, they chose to forgive me this time. But I cannot count on that ever happening again. Okay, I'm still salty and sweaty and wet from that swim, but come around to a market to try and eat a bit healthier. Tepacit market, or the fruit and veg market down from Tepacit market, um, basically a produce place. Things that I did wrong, things that I could have done better. Point number one, I arrived fucking exhausted. I had very little time off between finishing work and jumping on the plane. And as you'd know if you've watched any of my other silly videos, I was burnt the fuck out in my role. I've never been to war. I've never attended a horrific car accident, you know. I've not seen the things that soldiers and police officers and nurses see, but beyond that, it's been pretty tough. I've seen some really tough fucking stuff. And so I carry a bit of that with me. And I'm aware of that, but I think I let that, some of that get the better of me in the last three weeks. And really, there's no excuse for it here and there's no place for it here either. Oh, thank you. Nice and cold, oh, nice and cold. Point number two, what could have I done better? Prepare for the culture shock. Culture shock is real. People told me about it, I was like, nah. I've never felt it on holidays. Knowing that you're living here and you're not going home for a long time, the culture shock that I felt here has been massive and incredibly unexpected. Mistake I made was thinking I could drink my way through it and be okay. Just drink my way through the strangeness. Alas, I drank, I felt more strange. Obviously, not a mistake, but a consideration is arriving with such little money. What that did to my psyche is put added pressure on me to develop multiple income streams that I haven't had to do in Australia. I'm talking about doing little graphic design jobs online for friends, doing some photography stuff here, selling some landscape photos I've taken on you know, a stock website, all these ideas that I had that seemed easy at home. Trying to pull all that together whilst drinking and partying just didn't work. I just have to touch on reputation one more time, right? I'll give you an example of where reputation really mattered and where I actually got it right. Three particular instances. I was in a bar, one of the first days I arrived here, I met a lady, the bar owner. We got along. I ended up renting her apartment from her. Second instance, when I moved in, I was having trouble finding a, like, an item, a parcel that had been sent to me had been lost, all right? So there was a plainclothes man in the office just milling about the foyer. And I went into the office and was like, help, can you help me find this parcel? He was a Thai man, not wearing any, any uniform, just got up and did a sweep around the area and made some phone calls in Thai and bang, my parcel arrived. Next day, I find out he is the head of security for the entire complex. And I'll throw a bit of funny footage in just now about one of those little squirrels, the fattest, lumpiest squirrel that I've ever seen here. We don't have squirrels in Australia, so they're a complete novelty to me. So this fellow in the green shirt, I thought, oh, he's just a local, he's just hanging around. I don't, I don't know, maybe he's the gardener or something. But I shook his hand, said hello, and he let me pat his pet. Days later, turns out he is the big, 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 big boss of the entire complex. In those three interactions, if I'd been rude or demanding when I'd lost my mail or rude at the bar or hadn't approached the man with the squirrel politely, if I hadn't gone about that the right way, I don't think I would've got my apartment, I would've put security offside and I would've put the fucking owners offside. I'm speaking to myself here, it really pays to be on your best behavior at all times. I need to be on my beh best behavior at all times because you don't know who's watching and you don't know what opportunities you can miss by being a dickhead.